What is going on with this weather? Don't we look have? at me. Oh, uh -oh I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is going to be. Ultimately, it will be my fault. But you know, here in Lincoln, we've had snow as late as May. Mm. So this isn't, it's not out of the question. Okay. It's just not very much fun to deal with, especially <laughs> for the folks that have had snow. And we're going to show you who those folks have been over the past uh, 24 hours. And right now, we've got cloudy skies in Lincoln and some rain, uh, some chilly rain getting ready to move back in. We've got a lot of things to talk about tonight, so we'll start you off with first cast. And we will say cloudy skies, breezy and chilly tomorrow morning with some cold rain falling. Lincoln and Grand Island mid to upper 30s. Tomorrow afternoon, the chance for showers will continue in Lincoln. We could see a few peaks of late-day sun in Grand Island, Hastings and Kearney. It'll still be breezy with highs doing no better than 45 to 50 tomorrow afternoon. We should normally be in the mid to upper 60s. And then tomorrow evening, mostly cloudy here in Lincoln, but partly cloudy conditions. And tomorrow night, we're going to be looking at some very cold conditions. Frost advisories probably going to be issued, or at least the possibility of frost across much of the coverage area as temperatures get real cold. One more reminder, if you don't have anything to do tomorrow night, we'd love, even if you do have something to do tomorrow night, we'd still love to see you at 7 o'clock at Lincoln Southeast High. And with this weather, you ain't going to want to be doing anything outside anyway. It's a benefit basketball game for the behavioral skills program. Program. Students in kindergarten through ninth grade, a celebrity team of which I will participate will take on uh, the BSP students, uh, some staff, some UNL uh, athletes. Our coach will be Shane Osborne. A lot of TV personalities, radio, newspaper celebrities as well. We thought we were going to have Kevin Garnett. Turns out we're just going to have Kevin Suits, so we're going to have to make do with him. And we'll also have uh, Attorney General John Bruning and Fire Chief Mike Spade. Three bucks to get in, a dollar for students. We would love to have you come down and cheer us on or cheer the BPS guys on. Uh, just come down and uh, help out a great cause. Here's a check at some 24-hour rainfall totals. Grand Island with over three-quarters of an inch, two-thirds of an inch in Wilbur, over half an inch in Orr, Beatrice, and Aurora, as well as North Platte. Here in Lincoln, about a third of an inch. We're going to pick up some more moisture over the next couple of hours. And snowfall, not just rainfall, but snowfall. Up in Cherry County, we've had between four and eight inches of snow around Valentine and Kilgore, and then you can see some additional snowfall totals there. And it's certainly not out of the question that some folks, especially across the north, could mix in some snow during the evening and overnight hours tonight. Here's a look at Nebraska radar, this loop over the last three hours. Here's the chilly rain moving out of central Nebraska into the eastern part of the state. We'll see rain here shortly in Lincoln and the snow continuing to fly around Ainsworth and O'Neill. Here's a look at the National Weather Service radar out of Hastings. You can see the moisture now continuing to push from the Grand Island and Hastings area on towards the east. That's the uh, moisture that will be working its way into eastern and southeastern Nebraska. Here comes that chilly rain. Most of this is very light, but some areas could pick up a quarter of an additional inch of precip. Afternoon highs today range from the upper 30s all the way to the 70s, so it was quite a mess out there today. 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, including 50 for a high in Grand Island in the afternoon, 68 in Lincoln. Right now, temperatures are in the 30s and 40s. We've got some very gusty winds out there, and it's still blowing between 20 and 30 miles an hour. So if you combine the actual air temperature with these winds, You've got wind chill to deal with. Can you believe it? In late April, we're talking about teens and 20s for wind chills across much of western and central Nebraska. That's not very pleasant. Speaking of not very pleasant, cloudy and 45 with a gusty north wind here in Lincoln. We're down to 36 in Grand Island with some light rain and a north wind at 23 miles an hour. Past 24 hours, you can see our storm wrapping up in the warm sector of this storm. There is a severe weather off to the south and, of course, the wintry weather across portions of the northern and central plains. There's the cold front continuing to move away. Windy cold conditions with some snow and rain mixed across the state. Tomorrow morning, we'll continue to see the chance for snow, cold conditions, windy conditions. It'll be a chilly rain, we think, in Lincoln and Grand Island. And then things will start to clear out as we move into late in the day on Tuesday. But again, this cold area of high pressure will set the stage for temperatures in the 20s and lower 30s tomorrow night. Tonight, we're talking about 20s, 30s to around 40. Highs tomorrow only in the 40s and 50s. Lows tomorrow night, very, very cold and then much better by the time Wednesday rolls around. Tonight, mainly cloudy skies with periods of rain, windy and colder, 39 in Lincoln, 35 in Grand Island. Tomorrow, the forecast calling for some rain through at least the first half of the day. Some gusty north winds, a high of only 49 in Lincoln, 45 degrees in Grand Island, and a forecast right now for Wednesday. A very chilly start. In fact, it could be a frosty start, but with plenty of sunshine, we'll warm into the low and mid-60s by Wednesday afternoon. Seven-day outlook looks like we'll warm up rapidly Thursday and Friday. Slight chance for some precipitation during the day on Friday, but after today and tomorrow, things will get back to normal around here. But goodness sakes, talking about a cold slap in the face, when you've got to talk about 48 inches of snow, even in northern Nebraska, it's a little late in the year to be talking about that. Yeah, no kidding. So I shouldn't complain about that 45 degrees tomorrow. <laughs> I wouldn't okay. if I were you. Okay, okay. I okay. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kim. You bet. Players tonight's winning lottery numbers got the 2x2 two two red numbers are 5 and 16. The white numbers are 6 and 19. The Nebraska pick three numbers are six, eight, and five. And the pick five numbers are three, 14, 22, 23, and 35.
One of the Husker football players is transferring. That's right, sir. It's shocker or not. The Huskers are losing one of their eyebacks, now a buyback. A guy who's saying goodbye to the program. We'll have the details on that coming up next in sports. 1011's online sports poll is brought to you in part by Williams Cleaners. The IBAC race Husker Nation is looking forward to will be one member short come the fall. Today, Leon Jackson told head coach Bill Callahan he's leaving the team. This announcement comes after finally settling into a position this spring, which Jackson did at IBAC over the past month. The sophomore to be rushed for 50 plus yards on 12 carries in the red-white scrimmage. Last season, he spent time practicing in the backfield, then was moved to safety and wound up at receiver. 10-11 Husker insider Sean Callahan thinks Jackson might be going back to his home state and will possibly transfer to Washington or Washington State. Bill Callahan issued the following statement about Leon. Quote, we want to thank Leon for his contributions and efforts, and we wish him well in his future endeavors. We have been extremely supportive of Leon Jackson's development in our program, and we are disappointed to see him leave so early in his career, end quote. Well, we want your thoughts on Leon Jackson leaving the team. Log on to our Voices from the Crowd sports blog and let us know. Well, even though the Nebraska baseball team took two from Texas in Austin, the Huskers remained at number four in the national polls today. Up next for the Big Red, Wichita State, who they host tomorrow. That game can be seen on Cox Cable or Time Warner Channel 77. This week's sports poll question, if the game was on the line, which Nebraska pitcher would you want on the mound? You see the options, log on and vote. From baseball to softball, Ronda Ravel's team enjoyed quite the thrilling weekend at Texas Tech. Saturday, Jamie Waldecker and Crystal Carwile hit back-to-back -back home runs to tie and win the game in the seventh inning. Then yesterday, the Huskers came from behind, taking the lead in the seventh, but the game went into extras. In the tenth, the Big Red put up six runs, three coming on this Devin Porter homer. Well, that's about as exciting of a series as you'll find. I kept thinking yesterday, had we been playing that game at home with this crowd and as lively as they've been this year, they would have been absolutely going crazy in that 10th inning. So we we'll hope to give them uh, some real highlights in the next two weeks. Maybe not so much drama, but at least a lot of highlights. Well, Ravel hopes those highlights begin tomorrow as her team hosts Creighton at 6 p.m. That game kicks off a six-game homestand, which is music to the Huskers' ears. They're 15-1 and one this year at Bowen Stadium. We love playing at home in front of our fans. We have the best fans ever, and they're so loyal and great. We just enjoy playing with um, in front of them and just being at home and comfortable in our own setting, and just we're really looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. High school track and field, the Eastern Nebraska Championships, 100-meter relay for boys, or 100-meter dash for boys. Check out the finish here. The guy in the far right is going to win it, but look how close it is. Three guys within seven hundredths of a second. Adam Pekarik wins from East Butler. Then on the discus, Sam Siegel of Lincoln Southwest tosses 140.5 feet. He also wins the shot put. Good day for him and everybody else there. John and Cerise will be right back. We're here in the Amazon. The United States is getting a very big delivery. It is a 160,000 ton cruise ship. This is the world's largest cruise ship, the Freedom of the Seas. Hamburg leaders handed over the vessel to Florida-based Royal Caribbean Cruises. The giant ship can carry around 4,000 people. It offers several different pools, an ice rink, and a climbing wall. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that this is probably the most uh, sophisticated, uh, technologically advanced bridge uh, on the high seas. Uh, we have the same systems and in many ways more advanced systems that you'll find on, on naval vessels. Now, if you'd like to catch a ride on Freedom of the Seas, you'll have to book a Caribbean cruise. Authorities say the liner will sail from its home port in Miami. That's pretty impressive. Just book that cruise. I think we should all go. <laughs> well, Ken's coming back with one last look at your forecast. Before that, a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on 1011. Coming up tomorrow on 1011 This Morning, your produce man will tell you why this can be one of the worst times of the year for the bell pepper. And more showers are in the forecast. We'll have your pinpoint forecast every 10 minutes. Please join us tomorrow for 1011 This Morning.
I guess we better wear something warm tomorrow. Oh, wow. Or two or three <laughs> things that are something warm tomorrow, I think, might be the best idea. Here's a look at Nebraska radar. Snow falling across the north, otherwise a chilly rain moving into eastern portions of Nebraska. If it's not raining in your neighborhood right now, it will be shortly here in the capital city. Breezy conditions, very cold. It does not warm up very much. We don't see much sun. Tomorrow night it gets even cooler, and we could start the day on Wednesday morning with some areas of frost. But after that, temperatures warming up. All right. Well, we want to thank you for choosing News Now. Have a good night.